I'm Kevin Davis, and this is the Catholic Family Podcast. Thank you all very much for being with us here today. I'm joined by a good friend of the, good friend of the show, Father Stephen McKenna. Everyone should know him by now. He, he is our go-to priest for difficult subjects. And well, Father has, has picked another one today, another difficult one, but another extremely, extremely important one. And it's covering how children should behave during Mass. And yeah, I'd say even more importantly, how do parents get their children to behave? Or what, what, what do you teach them to get them to that point? And, and it really is something that I think if anyone wants to watch the show, maybe afterwards or even before, go watch a show I did with Father Benedict about the dignity of the Mass, you know, the, the, the respect that we owe the Mass itself and what it means, what is the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass? Because I think maybe that's a good place to start. And then you can go into this talk by, from Father, where I'm sure Father will talk about that as well. But Father Benedict Hughes gave a really in-depth discussion about that. And I think that to me, that really helps. It's like, okay, this isn't, you know, this isn't messing around. This is something that's, that's deeply important and that we should all take very seriously, which of course I'm not saying anybody doesn't. But anyway, Father, um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and I, I know there are there are people already kind of shrinking down in their seats, like, oh boy, okay, do we really want to listen to this? But 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 please, everyone, you know Father by now. But Father, he's gonna shoot straight, but um. But, but he, he's a pretty nice guy as well. So I know Father will, will bring his, his normal wisdom to the show. So Father, without further ado, please. Thank you very much, Kevin. It's good to be here uh, as always. Um, yeah, so it's, it's something that I think every single priest uh, out there and uh, has many experiences with, and, and we always feel sort of a little bit torn as to whether to say something, whether to not say something, is somebody going to, 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 to be, you know, ups, upset or is somebody going to take it well or whatever it may be. Um, or, uh, and, but I think that, I think most parents out there generally want to do the right thing for their kids. And so this is what this is. This is an informational, uh, I, f I figured that this is an, a means of giving information about um, about uh, how and what to do with dealing with kids, uh, young kids at uh, attending at mass, and um, and how to go about making sure that you're giving them that appreciation for the mass, teaching them about that mass, teaching them the proper behavior, and also maintaining charity for those inside the church and 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 all of that uh, the other people that are in the church as well i think the number one um important thing to to say um for parents to understand is that um is that oftentimes people get worried about oh am i missing part of mass or i never feel like i'm being able to attend mass well or you know i feel like i'm you know like i you know these things and they and they're you know they sort of know their duty but they're bothered by the fact that you know sometimes they have to go out sometimes they have to miss large portions sometimes they might even miss the principal parts of the mass um which are of course the the offertory the consecration and the priest's communion the three parts that are essential to be um to be attentive to uh in order to fulfill one's sunday obligation to to be said to have actually attended mass you have to be present for those three pieces now and so people worry about that you know can i receive communion because i because i had to go out during the offertory or you know something along those lines and the answer is yes you can uh, receive communion you don't have to consider yourself not uh having attended mass because there's still a moral presence there as you have to go in the vestibule or even further away if, depending on how noisy of a of of a problem that become it becomes um and that's fine um you, you you know that's not what we're talking about in terms of being necessitated to be there moreover uh, parents should also take great consolation in the fact that um that they are receiving the graces of attending mass by doing their duty with their children because it, father father valancourt used to always put it this way god made your babies and he made babies to cry 
And so therefore, it shouldn't surprise God that you have to take a crying baby outside of the church. <laughs> so don't worry about it too much. Um, and that's so true. It's so when you think when you break it down into those is it's funny, but it, but it's also very true. Like when you break it down into those simple simplistic terms, that's exactly how God made babies to be. And so, so a parent doing their duty, taking their child out, they're actually very, they're doing what God wants them to do, and it's very pleasing to Him, and He rewards it with great graces and and fruits for for your spiritual growth and everything, just like as if you were attending mass itself. In fact, if it's when we're negligent on, on these duties and these things that we start to miss out on graces, actually, because that's, that's what God calls us to do. He calls us to do the duties of our state of life. Um, and it's not always what we want to do. It's not always what is the most um, pleasant thing for us to do. And it's not always the most, uh, you know, seemingly, uh, rewarding thing to do in actuality of course it is but but it's not it's not always naturally inclined towards us and so so this this is just sort of that little bit of instruction on on those things so what are some of the key back points i think we start off with this uh, this understanding if you have small children babies or toddlers or somebody that you might you that it's not unreasonable that you might have to 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 say I might have to take this child out of the church at some point during a mass. Um, the first key is sit in the back of the church, sit in the back of the church, sit in, um, make sure that you have easy access to the aisle, even if you can't sit in the back, the very back, and you're a few rows forward. Do not lock yourself in four people deep, pushed up yeah. against the wall either. You know, sit on the aisle. Even if somebody comes to your row and says, oh, the church is sort of is full. Can I sit? You, know, you have some space next to you. Can you sit here? Just just almost think of it as like, a, you know, you're on an airplane. And you are assigned an, an aisle seat. You know, get up, step back, let them go in, and then re, re Assume your seat near, there near the aisle, and if they ask why, you say, "Well, you know, I might have to to take the little one out. Uh, do you mind if I just stay here?" Nobody's gonna say, "Yeah, I'm. I I, I hate sitting, you know, four feet deep into the pew. You know, that's just not gonna happen." Um, uh, especially if there's a, you know, they're gonna appreciate that you're gonna take your kid out if if he starts to cry or something like that, and uh, that that's important. Um, uh, uh, reality. So first is is just strategic seating. Think ahead. You know, th think that where are you going to sit? Some places reserve the back pews for parents and families. Some places don't. But if you're watching this and you don't have small children, out of courtesy to those who do, leave those spots open. You know, that's. That's just, it's, just, you know, you want them out of courtesy to you being able to pray during mass to take their kids out. You, in return, out of courtesy to them, should not sit in the very back. It's just, it's that simple, really. You know, Makes that's, sense. I think, a little bit of charity in both directions goes a long way in uh, in doing these things. Um, so so that's that's the first point. The second point is now we'll get into, I want to start off by talking more about, so that's sort of like some of the general aspects towards it, right? Now I want to start getting to specifics of, I don't think you can't treat all children the same. So you have to think, okay, what, um, what kind, what, kind of child is my child um and so the first group i want to deal with is like babies like baby babies um so obviously with babies there's they're just being babies and so there's nothing to get upset about there's nothing for other people to get upset about and there's nothing to worry about uh, you you mentioned at the beginning of the show that you know um 
it's that it's a or a, before the show we went on air that um that you know how it's you know some think that it's a good sign that to have ba- a bunch of babies in a church and i agree 100 percent. you know there's the old saying if you're if your chapel's not crying it's dying and um and it's so true you know we want big families we want children to be there that is the future of the church that is the that is the lifeblood of of the faith you know it continues on through kids and that's uh and that's the fruit of 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 marriages and uh and the, you know the general populace of the church so we love children you know that this should never this show should never be taken to be you, that you know anti-child this is this is pro we're a pro baby um so <laughs> um but um and so with that don't um like don't worry that your kid cries that's perfectly fine but do be ready to to think of just the the charity towards other people there are other people there that are trying to pray there's a priest that's trying to focus on the mass and so you know you think to yourself okay this noise that's interrupting that i need to 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 remove that from that situation as best i can for until i can calm them down or satiate them in some sort of way and just just real quickly Paula, to mention that or to, I, to get to, to get your opinion I, I've seen this in, especially with babies, a few times that, that the mother takes the baby, and I think like, the natural instinct is to go shh, which I think, of course, if it's for a couple seconds and you're walking the baby out, it's fine. But I've actually seen it where the mother will just sit there, you know, and just continuously going shh. And I remember one time I was serving on the altar, and I was just like, I, I almost couldn't even hear it anymore. You know, it was just like this. It was almost, I think, it was more distracting to me than. Um, than the baby crying. I think maybe that's, I don't, I don't know if you feel the same, but I think that some of these times you just, as you say, maybe just get up and yeah, I, I think sleeping or something. I think it's always good to, to sort of point out the difference between like a distracting noise and, you know, incidental noise. So a baby that sort of coos a little bit or makes maybe like starts to fuss and you, you give it like the shh and it actually quiets down that's fair game. Like, you know, like don't feel like at the immediate instance that your, your child starts, some people take it too far. I think um, mm-hmm. I've seen plenty of them that, that they almost, the parents almost miss all of the mass, but not necessarily by, by necessity that they, they think, well, you know, that if I, I just got to stay out here because the baby might start, might start making noise or it's making just these light kind of little bits of like occasional noise. Those don't distract me. Those don't distract people praying. Those things are just, that's just life. You know, that's just part of, part of anything. And so don't, that's not what we're talking about here, you know? And yeah, if somebody, you know, shushes a baby once or to try to like, you know, kind of like just gives it a little shot to see, okay, if I can calm it down in the next second or two, then, then okay. But once you realize like that didn't work well then then the next step is to to go outside and and then continue to try to calm the the baby down and you can come back in as soon as you're done and that's the thing about about that is that nobody especially if you're sitting in the back but even if you have to sit a you know a little bit further forward or whatever nobody cares how many times you go in and out we want you to come back into the church. Don't feel like you have to live in the vestibule. Don't feel like you you're you know you're sort of like banished to the to to the outside, and you know you have to just like sit there shivering, looking through the window or something like that. That it's no, we want you to come back in, and we don't care if you come back in fifteen times. Like that's that's fine. The, I would say the only exception being if it's the middle of the sermon because of the fact that that coming back into the chapel you know we i try we try to make rules for our chapels at least and i think probably other places probably do the same that that if somebody has to leave during the sermon or is outside the chapel during the sermon to come back in during that time 
is very distracting to the priest trying to keep a train of thought and trying to to preach and and sometimes it can really throw off the the entire i know for me it can oftentimes throw off the entire sermon and i think we talked about it before when we we're talking about like general sort of like behavior at mass or something like that if i have a vague recollection of that but um but yeah i i just think that uh i think that the like the coming in during the sermon is, is distracting, but otherwise, any time during mass, just just come back in. It's it's perfectly fine. Nobody minds at all. Nobody's looking at you askance, and if they do, then that's their problem. You know, like don't worry about it. But it shouldn't be. And most people have had children, and they know. You know, and um, and so that's 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 perfectly fine. Babies are gonna cry and that's why i say you know like like i said the little coup don't worry about but you know if it becomes a more consistent noise or if it becomes louder they start to cry or whatever then just you know just get up and go and that's perfectly fine you're doing exactly what god wants you to do when you walk out that door to take care of the duty that you you have to do um and um so that's so that's a, that aspect you also you know, it can be frustrating, but um, as I come back to it again, you know, don't don't fret about like it's not the baby's fault. It's you know, it's just a fact of life. Sometimes they're hungry. Sometimes they're uh, just uncomfortable. Sometimes you know, myriad of other baby issues or whatever they could be. Or sometimes they just want to make noise and. You know, they just they all of a sudden they realize that they have a voice. Sometimes that's a funny thing. Sometimes they realize for the first time that if they make a noise, it echoes and they and they <laughs> like that reality. Oh, it echoes in the church and they start doing it more and more and more because they can. Future priest. It. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Or choir member anyway. Right. And so, you know, and so that's and so like so like it's just a just a reality. It is what it is. Nobody's upset about it. Don't worry about it, but but do, you know, think about the other people and do, you know, just kind of walk out and then when you can come back in. Um, and so I think that type of mentality towards, towards little children, little babies, you know, ones that you can't really, you can't really expect any kind of, you know, cooperation training to go along with, you know, like that's, that's just what it is. Don't fret about any of those things. Most, I mean... It's hard in the missions, you know, because missions are small and sometimes there might not be a real ad, like great places to, to take the kids and you know, just do the best you can in those situations. And everybody understands when you are in a mission type of situation. But in a church, you know, we usually try to facilitate in various ways, you know, here at St. Gertrude's. There's a vestibule area and um, we keep the you know the speakers out there for where they can hear pickups from the from the um uh from the from the altar there's like a little altar mic there so they can hear pickups to hear what part of the mass they're in and then also they can hear the entirety of the sermon we even have like a little wall heater that heats the vestibule up nice nice in the winter time so that the kids can stay warm and things like that and and whatnot um you know and then we even keep a door for the classroom so like if the kid really starts like you, you have like total meltdown moment you can go from the vestibule through to one of the classrooms and the doors open for that on sundays so that uh you know if you really needed some privacy or really needed to like oh boy like this is really really noisy and and the wall and door is not going to take care of that you know then you need more layers Add that you more. Can, <laughs> yeah you can you can you can get those layers if you need them um so there's you know and at saint hugh our vestibule there has a little bit of like glass so that usually you can see through that and we just added a television down in the basement where we will um, have the live stream playing um, because that's because St. Hugh is much smaller. And so people, you know, you can only put so many people in the vestibule and then on top of it, if the, you know, it's only going to stop the noise so much and parents sometimes go down to, to nurse or they go down to, 
to, to change a diaper or if the kid's really being loud, then they'll go downstairs. Well, then that, it's hard for them. There is a speaker for the sermon uh, in the vestibule at, at St. Saint, Saint Hugh, but, um, but, you know, if you're not in sight of that, um, then it might be hard to tell, like, for instance, when communion time is and stuff. So we just put, we try to facilitate what we can in those moments. Um, and so, and I think most priests, most churches try to do the same, you know, like if they, if they can have some sort of means that you can still keep an eye on what's going on or hear what's going on to some degree. Um, but like I said, small churches and missions and newer, newer chapels and things like that, you know, it takes time to eventually get there. But, um, but maybe that's the thing, like as father, father Chicago used to, when we first started live screen streaming, people would have these ideas like, Oh, well, you know, we need to have a camera on the pulpit and a camera on the, on the choir and a camera on the, on the, from, you know, different angles. And he's like, well, maybe if you want to donate the cameras and donate the technology, then <laughs> right. maybe we'll do right. that. But, you know, exactly. and, and then and then if you want to donate your time to switching back and forth between them and then, you know, just nobody really t- kind of took them up on that, obviously. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Father, I, gotta continue. I know we got to keep moving on, but real quickly, because I think that's such a good point. Mm-hmm. I've had people comment on that. I, like Omaha, you know, people love Bishop of um, you know, his sermons and they don't have any equipment and I've, I've seen people you know, okay yeah why aren't there more sermons from the bishop and it's exactly what you said father and I, I know and I know that for a fact I know people who would set it up you, know, you just gotta you gotta pay for it so if anyone wants to do that please you can contact me I, I will make sure you get that money to a setup because I there are so many priests who don't have these things that absolutely should it would be a beautiful thing to have more of their sermons I mean Bishop Pedronis being a prime example so so definitely, um, you know, hit me up if you want to contribute to that. I'll, I'll get you in contact with Father Borja and get that get that going. But yeah. great, that's a great point, Father. And same thing, yeah. Like I said, and in in, if your parish doesn't have a speaker in the vestibule, so you have to take your kid out and you can't hear the sermon anymore or something like that. Well, maybe that's something you start thinking about. Maybe, maybe it's not just you, but maybe other you and other families of, of kids think, okay, let's if we have four or five of us together, we can save up and and put in a just a very inexpensive speaker system that is there so that we can hear a sermon being given by the priest while we're out there, you know, so, and it takes time and, and, and do it wherewithal, but, but, you know, it's, I think most priests want to, want to facilitate to some degree, you know, of, of that, that aspect. And so, so like I said, babies don't fret about it. Babies are what babies are. That's how God made them. He made you their parents, you know, and it's part of your duty and, and it's part of charity. And so, Charity reigns supreme, and that's where your graces are come, going to come from, is from from doing that. So even if you feel like you, if a kid has just a terrible time and he's just crying galore, and you think, I never, I didn't even see any of the mass at all. You know, I don't, I don't even know if it happened. You know, you you got all of those graces and then some because of uh, of of that, and you don't have to fret about, you know. Um, you know anything along those lines you've done exactly what you're supposed to do i just like how you said father charity first but um i'm not sure that's the case when you come to toddlers because uh, <laughs> I, 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 having had toddlers charity charity and patience is a, is, a, is a bit of a struggle sometimes so i imagine that's where you're going next but i think th- th- yes. this is i mean this is and this is key for me because I, I got a four-year-old a two-year-old and a baby on the way and so that that's the really hard one because especially if you have these toddlers that act up and we, we've got one now that he's a, he's a little boy who just, you know, he doesn't, he, he doesn't want to sit. He doesn't want to sit yeah. still for, for an hour and a half or two hours. He just doesn't want to do it. So, so I'm, I'm really curious about that. I mean, how, how do you handle that? How do you handle toddlers? So, you know, toddlers are, are interesting. And so, you know, because, because they start to develop little personalities and, you know, and different things like that. Um, People begin to, you know, like you start to think of them. How do I put this? You start to think of them as people, but you know, I mean, they are people. In, you yeah, know, I'm, not person, to, yeah right. I'm not trying to take that away from that. But what I always tell people in a marriage class, and now parents don't, don't get upset at me about this, but this is, is very important and it's actually very true um, that you have to train children like you train a dog because what is the number one difference what is the primary difference 
between man and beast. It's the use of reason. It's he has an immortal soul, and he has the the use of reason. Well, kids don't have the use of reason yet. They haven't developed to that point to be able to. They have. They will. They have the potential of of getting there, but until they do, you have to think to yourself: my child is very much like an animal in that sense so maybe some kids parents don't have any trouble imagining their, their kids as animals <laughs> but <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um but you know depending on the day maybe or whatever it might be but uh but yeah but it's so i'm not saying that your child is more is just as important as a dog obviously they're much more important than than an ant just that some animal but in terms of training them, it's very much the same. How would you train a dog to do things that you want it to do? If it misbehaves, you 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 correct it, you scold it, you even punish it to so it has you know sort of like I, I have the wrong, and immediately afterwards I have the the repercussions for the wrong or the correction. Or the wrong and if they do good well then a dog you say good boy and you treat it and you you know give it a treat and do those things now i'm not saying you need to have like a pocket full of snacks for your kid in church um that's not that's not the goal for this but but the sentiment is that you know if a child is misbehaving at church you have to correct it right away you know like correct it and um and do so uh, um, so that they, because you can't necessarily wait till afterwards to say, you know, hey, an hour and a half ago, you know, you're in the car ride home, an hour and a half ago, you were not behaving during the offertory part of the mass, and that was bad. That doesn't mean anything to that two year old. Like an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, wait, yeah wait, exactly. Five so, five minutes ago for a two year old is is yeah, nothing. Yeah, it has to be. It is. It has to be action reaction. You know, it has to be in the moment. Don't miss the opportunity. Um, so can I ask, not... Father? I'm sorry. I mean, because this is something I remember in the conversation with my parents that they said, they they said exactly what you say that you have to have a reaction. But they were really, they really stressed that you had to make sure that you do it in a way that the children don't, they're not fear, but they they still like to come to church. I mean, they. It's not something that they they know they're going to come, they're going to be bad, and they're going to get punished or spanked or, or whatever it is. And and so they, they end up as they grow up, they don't want to come to church. And and, and so maybe and if you, I know it's a hard thing to clarify because it really is it is individual cases. Um, some kids I think do sometimes need to be swatted on the butt, you know, in extreme cases. But how do you do that? How do you do that in a way so that, that they they also want to be in church? So. I so I think that that is a is a really good point, and that's something that I was going to talk about too. Is that um, there what what is included in part of the duty of a parent with a with a with a small child in church is once they are able, to, you know, like I said, you're they're a toddler, they're three, you know, two, three, four years old, except you know that that type of thing, and then obviously it sort of gradiates, you know. Up or you have higher expectations you have you're able to do more as they get a little bit older and things like that but it is a training aspect of it so uh, even when they're behaving and they're and they're doing good in church like you want them to it, it's it's uh, it, you want them you want to train them uh to mass and what's going on and things like that and so i think some of the most effective aspects of that is when i see that like um uh, the like that toddler is right beside a father or a mother, and that you know, w as a parent, you just want to read your missile and follow along with the mass so you can get something out of it yourself. But your whole life needs to be this dedication to you know your children first, and that includes your your mass attendance. And so this it's some it's some of the most edifying things to see is when you know a father is there you know kneeling next to his son or daughter and you know kind of has like an arm 
around them or something like that. And then it's like pointing out either maybe they have like a little kitty book that has like pictures of the mass and like, Oh, this is what father's doing now. Like this is, you know, this type of thing here or, um, like, or the, a lot of, sometimes I, I'll hear fathers, you know, tell their children, like, now pay attention, right, right before the consecration, pay attention, here, here comes Jesus, here he comes, you'll see him, did you see Jesus lifted up, I look, there he is, elevated into the air, you know, and just whispering these things to them, uh, it was funny, one time, I remember it was in a, in a mission mass, and, um, so it's a small little room, same as for a group of people, and, uh, and there's a bunch of little kids there. And um, as I was doing the consecration, I hear the father do just that. He says, I hear him go, pay attention, here comes Jesus. Um, and it was before the, the consecration of the wine, um, the, the precious blood. And as I elevated the, the chalice, the child must have looked down, got distracted by something or whatever it was. Uh, it's because he's like, look, there he, there he is, there's Jesus. And then um, then I'll, I genuflected down again after the elevation, and I just heard, do it again, Father, <laughs> from, from, <laughs> from the little kid, you know? <laughs> and so... And little so, kid logic. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, exactly. So it was like, it was it was just really wonderful, you know? And and I almost started dying laughing. Uh, but uh, I, was, I, I, I had a story and, like that too, Father, that I my, my daughter was around two or three, and, and we, we I try when I can, you know, to do the same, you know, okay, here, you know, I know here's Jesus, our Lord's coming. And so one of the first times after I had done that, so the next Sunday, she was just sitting next to me and she just says really loud, There's our Lord. Like, like, like yells it <laughs> during the yeah. consecration. <laughs> or Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And no, yeah. And, yeah. You're, you're right. And nobody minds. You know what I mean? Like that's right. that's right. That's one of those good noises. You know, honestly. Right. Yes, you want to say if it's if it's out loud, you want to say, okay, yes, but shh. And you just right. quiet. We're we're at church, but quietly, right? And but uh, you know, but don't in something like that. Don't shush them or you know, pun or be come across as being scolding to them in that moment because that's a good thing. That's a that is a good, you know, that if they're paying attention and they're pointing out mm-hmm. that's look, there's Jesus. You all you want to do is very kindly and 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 nicely reaffirm them in that and but say but remember we're at church so we don't we don't yell it so we don't we don't say it really loud you know like but very good that's you know that you want to reaffirm those things if that happens don't don't worry you know again if somebody's mad at that that's their problem. If a priest right. is mad at that, that's his problem. That's that's not your problem. That's you're doing the. That is a fruit of good parenting and good training of your children in the attendance of mass. They recognize it. Another really funny example of that was there was a little boy, and his dad would do the same thing. You know, like, oh look, here comes Jesus, and he was like two, you know, or whatever, one, or, you know, whatever it was. But, you know, little kids don't always associate the, the right things with them. And he was in that, you know how little children go through this sort of like that stranger danger phase where they are mm-hmm. where they see people that aren't their parents and that are adults and they just are afraid of them? Well, he was mm-hmm. terrified of, of me and uh, I have no idea why. Uh, but uh, I, he was terrified of me. And so I was visiting their house and anytime I would like see him or visit, you'd see him sort of back up. And I saw him across the room. He came into the living room. I was talking to his father, and um, and his dad goes, "Oh, you have to see this. Watch, watch this." And and he he goes, uh, he looks at the little boy who's like standing on the other side of the room, kind of like scared, look, and just staring at me. He goes, "Hey, little buddy, like, who's here? Look who's here. Who who is that sitting here on the couch?" <laughs> he just goes, he, like terrified look. He goes, "Jesus." <laughs> 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 because because every time they're in mass during the elevation he said oh look there's jesus there's, there's jesus. jesus and he thought he was talking about me and not and not the host he's like so apparently my kid's terrified of, of our lord you know like <laughs> so it's like, oh, like I, I, don't, 
I told him, I said, I've been mistaken for many a thing, but I've never been mistaken <laughs> for God. So that's, uh, it's pretty good, you know, so it's uh, got an upgrade on that one. But, uh, but yeah, it's, um, but th- that's the type of thing. And that's the other part to it. You know, people always take, people sometimes want to understand like the, the correction aspect of it, but the, but the, the doing the good is, is just as important. You know, that part of it, you know, if a kid, again, if a kid behaves well overall, all through mass, right. He does a good job. You need to, to reward that afterwards. You know, you need to be like, Hey buddy, that was a, a, you did a really good job today at mass. You know, maybe the reward is if there's coffee and donuts, they get a donut after mass. If they behave themselves, you know, maybe if your church doesn't have something like that, maybe, I mean, maybe you take them out for a donut or pastry or do something like that. Just as like a, as a, because again, it's, it's just rewarding the good. You want them to be incentivized. They don't understand it everything that's going on around them. They don't understand why they have to stay still and why they have to be quiet necessarily. So you want to reward them just for the fact that they follow through and that they do a good job. You know, you don't continue that, you know, they're 17, like, Hey, good job again today, buddy. Here's some more donuts, you know, but I mean, like, but it's, but you do like in that very formative phase, you want to reinforce that by just something nice you know that the, that you're proud of them that you know that you're happy that they did that and they get a little treat because of, um, you know it doesn't to kids it, it doesn't doesn't have to be anything super it just has to be something that they like and they know that they're appreciated and um and so that's a, a, an important aspect to that however getting back to the the corrective part of it it is also don't be afraid that the correction is going to turn them off from church because when because it's it won't they're they're too young you know to really associate all those things together so i think that's the important part too is that is that the the reality is is that the reason early on as toddlers that they're not doing well at staying still or paying attention and things like that is because they have no real understanding of what church is and what you know like they'll grow into understanding that and you'll help them by doing those little things showing them along teaching them you know kind of having that interactive part of like how to follow mass how to to know what what part you're at you know oh sorry along with that too bring your kids up to communion to the communion rail your little tykes you know um me and all the priests here at St. Gertrude's, I know it's not everybody that the, the priests that do that, but me and all the priests that work with us here at St. Gertrude's, if we, if there's a little non, non-communion age child, we always just, you know, give them a little blessing at the communion rail, the sign of the cross over, over them, you know, and, but that's part of them to understand. It's a good example to see, you know, they go up, they kneel down, they watch mom or dad receive holy communion they get their little blessing they want to they now want to do like you do you know and um and so that's an important aspect to bring bring them on up hopefully some of the priests out there listen to this and think yeah you know what i can you know it does takes no effort to kind of just give one of these you know it doesn't hurt anybody you know just just be nice priests, you know, <laughs> like it's a baby, <laughs> come on, you know, so just, just do the nice thing. Bless the baby. Everybody's happy. Um, you know, like that's the, that's, that's wonderful. And, um, but it's also just that good example of a, of a parent receiving Holy communion, the kids seeing what they're doing, they start to eventually want to, you always get the little toddlers that stick out their tongues expecting Holy communion when they get close to that Holy communion age, and they are not necessarily quite there yet, but they're getting closer. Try to train them to put their finger over their mouth so they don't get accidental first communion, you know? So, um, sure. that, that it's gonna be tough for a priest. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I believe you. Yeah, that, that is a parent's uh, issue rather than the priest. I mean, priest, I, I'm sure he knows many of the children, but boy, in a, in a large parish, you could yeah. like, you're like remembering every single one who hasn't received communion. That, that's, that's a, yeah. Yeah, especially if somebody's visiting, you know, like that's a big thing right. like here at St. Gertrude's. 
uh, in particular. We have a lot of visitors come in and, you know, we generally know our own, but, you know, a visitor comes in and, and sort of like borderline, you're like, uh, and sometimes you have like, you're about to give communion, you have the mom just like shoot the arm out and <laughs> like, no, <laughs> so, <laughs> stop. So um, that's a, that's an important aspect, but, uh, but yeah, it's, 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 uh, it is such a, a real good, part of of that training and it makes them it gives them a part another part of mass where they're not just having to sit still they get to walk up Mm -hmm. they get to kneel down they get to be in a different spot they get to see something that they probably can't see that's another part of why kids struggle to to stay still and pay attention during mass in addition to just being kids is that remember you're kneeling there and you can see over everybody he's standing on the on on the kneeler and he can't see anything you know and so like that's a lot of times that's that's a you know another thing you're like you gotta stay still you're in mass like i'm just staring at the back of his head i don't know what the heck's going on <laughs> like you know so right. so it's um so that's a you know another aspect to be sort of sympathetic about you know and and you don't, and don't correct every little nudge and twitch or whatever they make because they're going to that's too much that's then your corrections lose all purpose but you know but do be corrective if they're turning around and you know as they get you know as as development has it be you know the more that they're able to sort of start understanding what's going on the more you try to make them focus on what they're actually being at and things like that and teach them more about what they're they're doing now those who like i said but if they do misbehave that's where the correction needs to come in and again training a kid is like training a dog and so that correction yeah if you know if they are turning around you can reach over and you can kind of like grab their head and you know turn them back again or tell them to pay attention or something like that as they get old enough to you where you expect them to 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 be able to to do something along those lines you can tell them no talking whatever but if they if they start misbehaving to a point where you now have to take them out of, of mass which does happen obviously but you you know they're now a toddler and you know that okay they at least know they shouldn't be talking or they at least know they shouldn't be making a bunch of noise and i should you know they at least i have the expectation my expectation is now they shouldn't be i shouldn't be taking them out of church really or i shouldn't be taking them out often or whatever it is or you're getting to that point where you're ex- starting to have that development of okay we should be moving towards not taking you out of church at this point in time then you have to remember exactly how little kids think in those things what you're telling them to do is to 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 be quiet to to sit kneel still and to you know not have any kind not like their normal toys and you know different distractions around them and um and that's not naturally what a kid wants to do so you have to make them have the reason to do that because they don't understand everything that's going on around them and so you need to make them have the the reason to do that and the way to do that is that at a certain point along the way when it starts to be like, no, when I tell you, you need to be quiet and you should be able, you might not know what's going on, but you should know that I'm supposed to be quiet, be, at least because I told you to be quiet. Um, then what you have to realize what they're doing is they realize that if I make noise, I get to go out of church. Right. If I'm out of church, I can walk around. And if I'm out exactly. of church, I can you know, stand up and I can um, make some more noise and there's not as much problem with that and everything. And so the, 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 it goes from the kid not knowing anything as a baby and just needing to go out because he's crying to becoming a kid realizing that, oh, if I make noise or if I misbehave, I get to go out. As soon as that becomes the reality, outside the church needs to be worse than inside staying still and quiet and that is absolutely key outside needs to be worse and that's the only way to 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 get that to become uh reality i'll tell you a hilarious one of the funniest stories this is before i was a priest 
we when when CMRI first came to Massachusetts, um, I was a uh, working in, in commercial real estate at the time, and I was I ended up being the one who like brokered a deal for them, you know, for uh, to get a, a lease or like to they were coming twice a month I think, and it was um, so we rented out uh, a conference room in an office building that uh, that was part of this large commercial real estate company and so i was a parishioner and and uh and property manager at the same time for the cmri uh, for sister bernadette um and uh and we were in this conference room and it was on the third floor of the building and it was just like pretty much right next to the elevator. You got out the elevator you, and you turned and it was pretty close by. Well, I was in the back, I was in the choir there at the chapel. And during the mass, this this little kid was, you know, not behaving. And at a certain point, the father had had enough and he stood up, took the kid by the hand and walked out the door Insane. The you know, Genuflex walks out the door, turns left around out, out the doorway, and then you didn't really hear anything until all of a sudden you heard, "No, Daddy, no!" And then you heard "Bing!" and the elevator doors closed, and you didn't hear anything more after that. <laughs> they went on. They went on an elevator ride, and it wasn't gonna be a. It wasn't gonna be a fun elevator ride. And the last thing you heard before the doors closed with that bing from the elevator was, "No, Daddy, no!" <laughs> and I almost fell over laughing. It was one of the funniest things I had ever heard. You know, that kid knew what he was gonna get as soon as he walked in that elevator door. It's like. It was like a mobster walking into a basement apartment, you know, like he just knows that's not a good sign. And so and so that that little boy, uh, he learned a little lesson. But it was I always think of that as like a really good example, like, you know, the outside of that needs to be worse than sitting still, because then they're not going to want to when you tell them, hey, be quiet. Hey, sit still. Stop. 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 Uh, you know, stop hitting your your sister, or do you know, you know, stop being a nudge or whatever it is. And then you say, and then he doesn't. You say, do you want to go out? Then it's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, right. no, no, I'll sit still. Thank you very much. You know, and and that's part of training kids. You, you got to make that outside worse than than otherwise. They're just incentivized to 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 make noise and to 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 be a nudge so that they can get out and they can kind of run around and play and everything like that. And, and that's not what you want. You want to, it, it has to be uh, a training uh, towards, towards that, um, towards that end of, um, of bringing them to, to sit still to, and then by making it so like, Oh, I just better listen and I better sit still. Now you have the opportunity to, to, to show them all those aspects of mass and get them to love the mass and get them to, you know, say their prayers. And, you know, like I said, they're in church, they do a good job. You take them over, you light a candle at a, at a shrine, you know, you say a little prayer there with them and kids love doing that. Go take them to visit a statue that they, that is their, you know, their patron or one of their favorite statues or, you know, take them around, just do a little something with them after mass to, to see, you know, different aspects of the chapel, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, again, every church is different and every church has different amounts of things that they can do, but, you know, here at St. Gertrude's, we're fortunate to have a ton of statues and shrines and, and changing shrines and all sorts of different things. And so it's, you know, it's just, you know, bring them around, light a candle, do something, you know, nice with that, because that makes them even more attached to those prayers and to those devotions. And then by extension to, to, to the mass and, um, and they know that they're appreciated. And it's, and again, it's, a, especially fathers, you know, it's, it's good for mothers to do this too. Don't, I'm not discounting moms doing this, but especially for fathers, there's something about little children. If their dad can put their arm around them and whisper what's going on at the mass 
or he takes them over to a shrine and lights a candle and kneels and says a prayer with them. The fact that fathers have to go out and work all day and, you know, you know, like there's some, and also that they, they, they demand that sort of respect being the man of the house and everything like that, that, um, that there's something very special for children to have like a little, this is a little quiet alone time with just me and dad, you know, that we're going to light a candle. We're going to go do this thing or whatever, you know, like that's, that's really, and it gets them to appreciate um, and to love those, those aspects of the church. But, well, that's something I remember my, my parents saying too, that really stuck with me that did obviously, as you say, exactly. And, and, and especially how important is it that we have, you know, we're a good example. And that started with them. You know, they said that, language is so important they both studied um literature and language in, in university and and they said one of the biggest things was when they said it's not we have to go to mass it's we get to go to mass mm -hmm. and that's a really profound thing that, that was something that, that they told me yeah i think when we did the podcast a couple of years ago and that really stuck with me because it's like that's an incredible difference if you think about it it's like okay it's one word yes. whatever but but we have to go i mean that's a that's a duty we, oh, yeah, we have to go to mass. Yeah, we're getting up early. Many people have to drive an hour or two. I mean, for Catholics, I mean, the world around us, Sunday is their rest day, right? They sleep in, they they eat junk, and they watch football all day long. And obviously for us, it's not that way. So, you know, our baser instincts are, oh, yeah, okay, we have to go to church. But I mean, if we teach them that when they're little, yeah, of course, well, of course that's what they're going to think. Our language matters. So if we say, hey, guys, today, we get to do this. This is the most important thing we're going to do all week. And we are privileged and honored. And that, yes. I think, is also a huge, huge thing that boy, my parents have taught, taught yeah. us growing up. And it also brings me to my next point of that training a child is repetition, you know, that is also to go with it. That if you are fortunate enough to live to a, at a place where you can go to daily mass, Go as often as you can. I mean, you know, if you know, the, there's been a, like a, a couple of families here that, you know, have like a little toddler and they show up pretty much every single day to mass. And, and we, we used to we would joke like, oh, yeah, you know, so and so like the two year old, he's a daily communicant at St. Gertrude's, you know, <laughs> because because they'd be here every single day. But guess what? Those kids are, are really good at at behavior at church because because, you know, he might be only two or three years old, but he does it every day, all the time. And so, so like, they learn more quickly that way. It's much harder if you only have mass once a month at a mission to get a child to understand what is church even to be quiet at, because you just don't, and parents at missions know the struggle is, is, is harder than, than if you are at a uh, at, at actual church if you're in a mission they know it's it's more difficult to get them to understand that yeah you get a little bit more intimacy if you're in that tight quarters but you don't get the frequency of that and to go along with that is also that the frequency at home you need to start also having daily you know during family prayers where you make them kneel down and for for time for prayers you know, if you're at home and it's like the family rosary time and like, okay, now like little Johnny, you're going to come over here and you're going to, we're all going to kneel down. We're all going to be quiet. We're all going to pray. And they, they get corrected just like they do at church. Then they start to associate prayer time is quiet time. Prayer time is time that we don't play and we sit still. And when you can reinforce it at home every single day, and if you can couple that with frequent mass attendance, then they will learn very quickly. I mean, they're not, they're kids. They're not always going to be perfect. You know what I mean? Like it's, you're going to have retrograde days, but you know, but it's, but overall the overarching aspect of it, they'll, they'll improve. And then, um, and so that's a, that's an important reality. And then again, back on the, the good example part of it, they seeing you doing the things, they seeing you taking time to stop at a, a, a you know, a shrine in the church or light candle or something like that. Them seeing you go to confession, them seeing you going to communion. Why it's why it's good to bring up the little tykes with you to the communion rail. You know, them witnessing you do these things repeatedly. 
make them know that it's not just good for them. It's good for, it's, if it's good for mom, it's good for dad, it's good for, and then it must be good for me. It's something I want to do now. I want to see these things. And when they get old enough to start understanding it more, then you explain, yeah, you know, we all need to confess our sins and it's good. We get clean, you know, that's why I go into, I'm going to go to confession now, you know, and uh, yeah, we all want to go to communion you know, like that's a you know this is the, these are good things for them to 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 witness and to see because then that they, they're encouraged to to do likewise um and then um then i think the next portion to get to is um uh, uh, that's you know it, unless there's something else you want to ask about toddlers in general um okay. But I think the next portion is that point where they are now getting towards um, First Communion time. Then, you know, you probably have the expectation that they're going to behave themselves in church, you know, at least overall. You know, now is really the time to um, to now get them, as they start to understand and be able to recognize our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and sort of what's going on in Mass, now you take it the next step further start to to get them to see what's going on in the church to get them and then to get them interested in those things of the church and so like if it's a young boy and now he's seven years old and he's re receiving holy communion and things like that then you know he should be now working on trying to become a server you know he should he should you know, get them, get them starting to to study the Latin, to make the responses, and learn to become a server for for mass because he's received first communion. He should, he should be able, he should learn to serve. You know, you can you, you can start before right a little bit before his first communion so that once he's ready to go, he's he's ready to go to 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 do that. Um, you know, have um, uh, you know, uh, girls that they that they you know if they're interested in singing, you know, um start to introduce them to, to that stuff, to, you know, and especially if, um, if a parent's able to be in the choir, maybe not right away they're able to sing in the choir because that takes a little bit more training and time and things like that, but but maybe, you you know, talk to your choir director or talk to the priest or something like that and see, would it be all right that, you know, they're, they're really well behaved, they they're, they're want to, to, to one day sing in the choir, is it okay if they come and, and sit with me and inquire, you know, and and pay attention? You know, sometimes there might not be enough space for such a thing to happen, or if there's if it's too much of a distraction or something like that, you know, the choir has to come first for that. But at the same time, if you are able to at least start introducing them to it, then great. You know, here at St. Gertrude's, we're fortunate enough. I mean, this is one of the beautiful things about having a Catholic school. You know, Catholic school, our our, we have we have a, the youngest group of school kids that we've ever had as a like an overall thing. It's just one of those weird generational switches where most of our kids are really really young, but we still have high mass every single day, and those little kids they learn to sing it, you know, and and because every day, Father, sorry, every yeah, yeah. high mass every day. Wow, high mass cool. and sermon every single day. So you know, wow. it's part of going part of going to school. You know, then and the boys all learn how to serve. They all learn how to become, you know, work their way through the ranks from torchbearer to to acolytes to thurifer to MCs to MCs for solemn masses and pontifical masses and how to be a chaplain for the bishop and everything. They're all in grade wow. school, you know, and cool. our you know our choir, our school choir right now, you know, again because they're so little that you know. Um, you know, you, we only expect so much out of them, but up until maybe a year or two ago, you know, that was the, if we just needed to like, you know, break glass for emergency high mass, you know, have the school kids do it. And, you know, and they would sing some really beautiful pieces and, um, and everything. And, and it's just training from their young training all the time. And it's part of their daily school activity is that they're trained to do these things. And, you know, having a high mass when you have a school shouldn't be all that much of an accomplishment if you're going at it every single day, you know, and that's, um, and yeah, the, there's a teacher or uh, one or, you know, one or two 
to sing with them. I think, you know, one of the sisters and one of the teachers sings with them. But still, you know, it's not two voices singing. It's it's a multitude of voices singing. And, you know, some of the real little tykes, well, they get some of the hymns, you know, um, and maybe like the, the Kyrie and things like that or whatever. But, but you know, the, they're still little kids and they're singing mass and everything because they just that's part of their training training is good you know training is a good thing and they they love and appreciate it and so you know that's one of those aspects here um that is is a benefit and um you know i don't know it's not as you you know it's probably not super common in all of the churches but but it's something that could be more common with some effort and some some Neat. some time you know? i i'd never heard that before father that that blows me away that, that's a well, it just it just blows me away just thinking about it just how you compare that to a public school or something you know your first you, yeah. you wake up you, your first hour of your day or i mean i guess you're getting ready your, your second hour of your day or whatever you're you're going in you're having a high mass every day and that's that's what's starting off your your training and your learning that that's that's awesome that's incredible yeah. that, that, that's yeah, well, talk about yeah, it getting, I mean, getting yes. off to a good way of life wow yeah yesterday was saint joseph's feast day so we had yeah. a, a song you know it was just the school kids, but uh, we had a solemn high mass, wow. and with the procession out to the to the to the um, help the hall, the uh, the parish hall, and then the, with the with the kids singing, you know, processional song on the way out there, and then we did the the uh, blessing of uh, hot cross buns and um, and donated food for the poor, and then you know song out and everything like that and all of that so all of my mass sacred ministers everything along those lines in you know and it's just done with the school kids and you know it's like oh yeah today's the such and such a feast day it, that probably deserves a solemn mass we have the priests around we're, we're that's what we're doing and then that's it like no more questions asked it is what it is you know mm -hmm. and so and we'll get it done and yeah i mean on those ones sometimes when it's like a big feast like saint joseph I should say like some of the some of the homeschool kids that know how to serve well joined and added because you can have you know, a whole bunch of servers and things like that and so we added some of the homeschool kids to to join with us but it, mm -hmm. the core of it all is is the school um for that wow. for that aspect and if they didn't if the homeschool kids didn't come we could have we would still would have done a solemn high math it wouldn't have changed a thing so um so that's you know that's really yeah you know, it's really good and um um and uh, so it's i think we all, and i mean to put it in perspective i think we only have one high schooler in the entire school right now and okay yeah, wow. like a small handful of like you know small handful of middle schoolers and then the rest are elementary school kids and we're still able to to do those things and so so there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Exactly. And then, like I said, with that, every school mass, they get a sermon too. You know, again, wow. you know, it doesn't take much effort for a priest to put together five to ten minute sermon for the feast of the day. You know, it just takes the the wherewithal and the desire to do it. And those kids learn about saints every single day. Um, wow. So, but that's diversion. You know, I mean, that's getting a little bit off topic. But it's but it, but back to the like the training of kids. If you have a good Catholic school at your disposal, where they're going to teach them to sing and they're going to teach them to serve, you know that's that's one of the that's one of those sort of like uh, organs of the church functioning, you know, to to greater um, usage of of your kids' appreciation uh, and uh, and um, um, that learning about mass and the importance of it and everything like that when they have that regular access to it and that regular instruction in it um and then again to yeah, go along with that sorry good sorry just real quick i was just gonna say it, i i often think if i hadn't been an altar boy i don't know if i would have kept my faith i mean it's hard to say obviously it's all hypothetical but i know for sure it was a big part of what you know it, it was what kept me going kind of it was it was what was it was cool, I guess. I mean, it, it, that's not the right reason, but I mean, it was, it was what, it was the, it was a cool thing to do. I, I don't know how to describe it, but it was what, you know, no. kept me interested and I wanted to go because, you know, this is what the guys, that's what they were doing. And I wanted to do that. And, and yeah. eventually 
you know, it turned into, I did love to do it for the right reasons, but yeah, at, at the beginning, I can't say it was always because it, I, I wanted to serve God. Yeah. But, it was, but I mean, was, that's, but that's the thing. It was respectable. That's the thing is that it's like, that's the, that Catholic community aspect of it that you have, mm -hmm. like that it becomes like, almost like a, like a boys fraternity as it were, or a team that it is that it's like, you know, we're the, the altar boys, we're the ones that get to serve. And then like, we've always, like, we've got a, like this, it has its own little culture, at least here at St. Gertrude's anyways. And, and also at St. Hugh, that the boys that are, you know, act, uh, you know, torchbearers want to be, to become acolytes. The boys that are acolytes want to become Therefore, the boys that are therefore want to learn how to become master of ceremonies and have these responsibilities and and that sort of atmosphere feeds off itself that they're sort of om almost competing to like move up and get right. a chance to do the next thing and um you know i wouldn't you know like or we you know we you show up on a saturday and there's and there's like extra kids kicking around and you know and maybe i have a private mass and so I was like, oh, Father, are you going to say Mass soon? Um, yeah, in about five minutes. Can I serve you Mass? Like, yeah, okay. Like, come on. You know, like, that's, you know, and so it's just, um, you know, it, it breeds really good, um, you know, devotion in the boys. And and that's what fosters as well vocations to the priesthood, if they're going to have them, you know, the, is to, to start being involved in the liturgy in that way. That's what you want. Um, to come from from those means of, of serving mass in that way as potential vocations to come, um, and so that's that's a you know important aspect of it too, um, along with the that uh, kind of getting them involved is probably one point of uh, of correction for kids as they get a little older and even much older. This I mean this is correction probably for even some adults at this point in time. Um, bathroom go to the bathroom have your kids go to the bathroom before church um you know i remember i didn't grow up going to church very often but uh, when i was a little kid if we did go to church on the off chance that we did um my my mom would say to me like did you go to the bathroom before we left the house no like, like, why didn't you go to the bathroom? Because I don't have to. Go try, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, yeah. And and you know, some on and on a rare occasion, like if we got to church and we we I you know we didn't get a chance to go before we left, maybe we were running a little late or something like that. Um, the way our church was set up, the, the, our Nova Soto church was set up was there was like a like a T. And there were two side chapels facing like the the sides of the of the Noah's Order sanctuary. So like, and then there's the main part of the center. And so we always kind of came in through the back alley to into the parking lot. So we always sat, came through a back entrance way, which put us in one of those side things. And behind where the sanctuary was, from that side, was there was a doorway that you went through, and the when you walk through that door and you entered a hallway and it was the first door on the left in that hallway was the bathroom. The second door on the left was the Novus Ordo confession room, you know, kind of like you mm -hmm. didn't have a confessional, you had a confession room. So there was that Novus Ordo confession room. And then if you kept straight, you ended up in the sacristy. And so over the door that entered to the, that back hallway were the green and the red lights that were there to indicate if somebody was in confession. Well, because I was just a little tyke and I only associated that with going to the bathroom. <laughs> I thought that that was that, like when the, the light sense. was, when the light was green, the bathroom was free. When the light was red, it must be occupied. And then, and once mass started, there was no more confession. So the light would go out. And because my parents would never let me go to, to the bathroom, when as soon as soon as the mass started, then that I associated that when the light goes out, nobody's allowed Nobody in does. the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so that was my my mindset in towards it. But it was because we once mass started, we were not allowed to go to the bathroom. Like period. 
unless you were going to get sick, you were not allowed to go to the bathroom. You, you know, you either went before you got there, or you went when you when you first got there before church started. When church started, you were staying in that seat, and I don't care if you're saying you have to go to the bathroom. And so, parents, you tell your kids to go to the bathroom. You tell them if they don't feel like they have to to try, and then you make sure that they don't leave to go to the bathroom. Now, obviously. There's a certain age that that begins to apply, you know what I mean? Like you, you don't want accidents from, a, you know, a kid that just got out of diapers or something like that necessarily. Right. But, you know, but it's not too long after that that you can expect a kid to hold his bladder for an hour. You know what I mean? Like that's not a deep expectation um, to do so. And because guess what? You're distracting. That's an unnecessary distraction when it's like, oh, out the door you go to, to the bathroom. And then and in those times, you, you, you know, kids can miss, you, you know, sometimes they'll miss the one of the principal parts of mass. And very few people think about the fact like if you went to the bathroom unnecessarily and you went during the offertory consecration or the priest's communion, You've not, you know, let's say you're a nine-year-old boy and you walk out and did that. Well, you didn't complete your attendance at Mass. You didn't fulfill your Sunday obligation because you went out during the offertory and you just wanted to to have a halftime break, basically. And right. for a priest who's preaching a sermon, you know, that is definitely not halftime. You know, like that's people too often i see people even sometimes young adults or you know teenagers or something like that and but uh, you know walk out during the sermon time and to like go to the bathroom and then it's like what are you doing you, you know this is not a break this is not half time if i'm ob if i have an obligation to preach to the congregation then to some degree there must be an obligation in return to listen, you know, and and so it's you know that's a that's an important time of instruction. It's important time of of paying attention, and it's also disrespectful and distracting if it's during the sermon to to walk out unnecessarily like that. Like I said, kid crying, no problem with that, but you know, um, but for somebody who who should be staying put. You know, and again, I understand people might get sick or people might have something go wrong and whatever. I'm not talking about those in those instances, but I think if we're honest with ourselves, those are few and far between um, in reality. And um, and so uh, it's you know it's just just don't don't do those things. Um, and then um, so that's a, a big point. You know, bathroom go beforehand. Just like you would tell your kids to do if you're going on a ride to go to, to to vacation or you're going to grandma's house or, you know, or if you were, you know, if, if you paid $40 to go to see, you know, um, a baseball game or like, you know, an ice skating event or something like that, you know, you're not, you know, you would tell your kids to go to the bathroom before the started you wouldn't be saying like all right well you know like this 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 the skating the you know the this this the dance has started or the you know the the the, the concert has started of uh, you know like we're there to listen to the symphony or something like that and oh the concert starts in five minutes into the symphony ten minutes into the symphony like dad i gotta go to the bathroom you be like like really no, we just we just got here like I told you to go beforehand, you now we have to miss a chunk of this. Well, if you're gonna do that because you know of entertainment, how much more for the mass? Um, you know, and so that's so that's an important uh, point um, with that. And um, and then one last point um, as an overall thing, but I think it's really really important and as a, as a correction is that. Sometimes I see parents will have like older kids and they'll be the ones oftentimes taking the kid out of church and 
It's like I applaud them for being on top of like having the kid having the kid taken out of church because he's crying or he's misbehaving or or doing whatever. And then, but um, unless you are completely got your hands full with, like maybe you have th- three toddlers and and one, you know, and one of your kids is. 13 years old you know like okay well i gotta juggle these other two so you know can you can you take timmy out you know and just be on the vestibule with them fine like i'm not talking about the one-off things or the the occasional aspect of it that's but that's fine but to but don't let that be the habitual thing because it is the duty of the parents to take them take the children out it is their it is the duty of the parents to make sure that even their older kids get to attend and pay attention and grow from their fruitful attendance at mass. It's the duty of the parents to provide the correction to children when they're misbehaving. It's the important that the, those children, those little children, see the person in authority telling them, no, stop that, you know, behave yourself. You will be quiet. You know, we're going to come out here. Like that's, that's, it is important that it comes almost as as much as possible from the parents, not um, the the older sibling. Yes, sometimes it becomes necessary. I understand that, but it should, um, for the most part, be from the parent. It's not it's not your it's not your fourteen year old daughter's responsibility to miss mass it's uh, you know or portions of the mass to take kids out it's it's the it's the it's your du- duty to do that as a, as, a, as a father or mother no i think i had i had one question about it and i think it, it all makes sense i'm really again glad that you came on for this it it helps me with a few things too i mean it can be right in the middle of, of you know one getting out of being a toddler and one in the middle of it but I, I guess one question I had, and I've had this because I've, I think I've even had people mention it or it's come up. How do you handle it as someone who doesn't have the kids? So you're, you're the you're the bystander. You're you're the one who, who is being disrupted by a loud child. And obviously, as you said, generally just you know, handle it with patience and charity. I think that's fairly obvious. Yeah. But what what about in the extreme cases? I mean, I guess that my question for you, Father, is: Is there ever a case ever when a bystander, one of the other parishioners should say something to the parents. Because I think that obviously, again, norm, normally not, but I think there have been parishes where there's a phlegmatic priest maybe, or it just doesn't bother him, et cetera. I don't know. Is there ever a reason for another parishioner to approach parents? Um, yes, but it's a, it's a little delicate, you know? Mm. Um, so it's um, like, so for instance, it's, um, you know, I think the the position of being in the pew should be one of patience overall. And if you have issue, maybe sort of raise it to the priest first. Like, hey, this is something um, that's been going on for a little while. I don't know if you realized it or it's the, or realized that it's a... Remember, we have our backs to people for the most part, too. So we don't always know if it's the same person that's the offender or not or... Or things like that and just kind of bringing it to our attention but you know sometimes the thing that is frustrating for people is that um is what is when it becomes a new it's a new person coming in and it's like and then it's like well we were having like these nice peaceful masses and then all of a sudden this this new family comes in mm-hmm. you know and it's like well you know especially if they just come over for the novus ordo or converts or something like that it's like listen they might intellectually understand where they are at now for the church but then you have to remember the Noah's order is completely devoid of all Catholic culture whatsoever. And so you have to be like really patient and merciful with those people that they're, they'll learn, they'll, they'll get to realize it. And yeah, maybe at some point something gets mentioned to them by the priest, or maybe a, sort of like a general point gets made in a, in a sermon or a, a bulletin or something like that to try to like gently coax them along, but we don't want to scare them off because they you know, like, Oh, well, this, is, this is our first time in a Latin mass. Your kid's too loud, Rawr! you know. Like that's, I mean, they're, they're gone. You know, what I mean, that's sure. you know, we want to be welcoming and, and friendly to people, and sometimes that means just getting over yourself and being like, okay, you know, 
the, you know, I got to be patient because, you know, this is a, a family of souls that I want to be having the fruits of the mass and the sacraments and the faith and everything like that. Um, but at times, yeah, um, you know, at times it, I, I think you have to be very honest with yourself too. You have to think to yourself, am I the person that has a real tactful way that usually gets good responses out of people and is able to to do something in a way that it, like is really bears good fruit or am I the one or am I wanting to say this just because I'm frustrated if it's the latter if you just want to say something because you you're just fed up with it you know probably should shut your mouth you know that's um and just offer it up as a sacrifice or bring it up to the priest or something you know um and just just you know realize like okay uh, you know it's uh, i want to i want to say it because of me not because of you know um and then um but if you are somebody that generally speaking has a real good disposition about them and can go about it you know maybe you do you know, lend a, a helping hand sometimes that's really welcome especially especially from a woman you know there are some women that are just very um you know very nurturing very motherly and you know might have had a lot of kids and that might be a good branch over or maybe it's a man that has had kids and they've grown up and but it's somebody that's that is willing to to more take the approach of hey listen you know it seems like got your hands full a little bit like can i can i help a little you know do if you if you need to take the littlest one out you know you can leave the other kids with you know you can leave them with me or if you want to you know if you want to put you know like say it's a big family and they got you know a, a son that's eight you know and it's you know and then you have a five-year-old and a two-year-old and a you know and a baby you know and it's like you know and you have that kind of like fatherly or grandfatherly way or motherly way about it and, you know sometimes just coming up and saying uh you know listen and and you're well known and you you know you're kind of like one of those people that comes with the furniture of the, of the ch of the parish you know um you know it's sort of like you could come up and say hey listen you know you, um you know, if Benny, the eight-year-old, you know, if you want him to, you can come up and sit with me. And that way, you know, or the eight and five-year-old can come up and sit with me. And because they're relatively well-behaved and everything, and I can keep an eye on them while you have to take the kids out, you know, to, to to because they're crying. And sometimes that's just enough to make them self-reflect, oh, I should probably take them out a little bit more. But also, it alleviates some of the need of that, pull sometimes parents don't take their kids out to while they're crying because like well i don't want to leave the other ones unattended or you know or something like that and so it's it combines charity with with uh help and you know or you know it, you know or hey can is there some way i can lend you a help and hand on this or you know whatever sometimes going about it in a friendly tactful way can be very very beneficial and so i'm all um so yes there are times when that can be done but it has but it has to be really uh i think carefully thought about and carefully done and for priests i mean i think parents in general you need to recognize this that y yes we need to correct things that um when they when it be starts becoming problematic but we're not there to to uh, to micromanage, to nitpick every little problem, every little transgression or anything like that. That's not our job. That's how you run a cult. That's not, you know, that's not good. You don't want me constantly harping on people or whatever. But if there's an overarching general problem, um, then um, then yeah, you know, we need to address it. But know this, like, none of us actually want to come to parents and be like, hey, listen, you need to do X, Y, and Z. Like, this is becoming an issue. 
and in doing so it's not saying you're bad parents it's not saying your kids are bad kids it's not saying that um we don't want you there or anything like that do not take it that way that's why we're so hesitant to say things is because we know people do take and have experienced people interpreting it in that light taking offense to it take it for what it is it's a priest who cares enough about people both the people at the chapel and you and your family to come up to you and say something to you about you know hey you need to be more diligent in taking your kids out because uh, it's distracting for the me saying mass it's distracting for the other people that are attending mass and yada 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 just take it as instructive and uh, instructive criticism and say okay yes father thank you for for letting me know and then implement it and then i guarantee you everybody will be happy everybody will be fine with it it's nothing personal it's just an objective reality and uh, nobody, no, there, you know, nobody expects you to have all the answers of parent or know exactly where those lines are or anything like that. Just take it for what it is. As soon as you start taking it personal or, you know, comparatively to other people or something like that, you've gone off the path and you've and you've made the priest's job infinitely harder. And that's really just based in your own pride. Um, then and rather than in just trying, you're no longer concerned at that point about what is best for your children and what is best for the other people at, at the parish. You're now concerned more about how it makes you feel and your own pride and your own wounded pride than you are about the the greater good. And that's it's not the healthy thing to be. So just you know, if people take that with a with an appreciative understanding, because that's all we want in return. We just want everything to, to be a little smoother, a little better. And I think that's really good. And then to add to, you, to your question too, I think if you are very close friends with somebody, you know, if you're good friends with another family and you see like, okay, this person, I, I think in those situations, you, yeah, as a lay person, another lay person there, it's like, whew, you know, that these, you need to take your kids out more. Well, if you have a good friendship or, or some sort of good solid relationship that with this person, then yeah, maybe I think that's more of an opportunity. And that's also one less thing that the priest has to say. If, when lay people can do good in correcting and they're the right person for that job, then you're actually taking, you're alleviating the priest of one more thing. And also being that guy who has to say one more correction. And, uh, you know, and so, um, so if you know, like, oh, Bill and Susie are my friends. And so I, I can go up to them and say something, you know, and they, you know, they're not going to not be my friends afterwards. They'll, they'll understand and they'll, they'll probably bear good fruit. Then, then, you know, yeah, you're the guy who should probably go up and talk to him at that point, you know, and so, so do so and be nice about it, but but uh, but let him know, like, hey, listen, I think you should probably start doing this or whatever, so. Got it. Perfect. Thank you, Father. I guess I'll, I'll ask you maybe for last words, Father, and, and we'll, we'll wrap it up. I don't know if there's anything you want to say to kind of pull it all together. I mean, advice for parents in general, maybe maybe a one mm -hmm. one-liner. Yeah. Remember your your primary purpose of marriage. Your primary purpose of marriage is for the begetting and rearing of Catholic children. And a big part of rearing, training, bringing them up is teaching them how to attend Mass well and how to understand what Mass is. And so if it's part of your primary duty, a primary purpose for your vocation in life, then then God will reward you for doing it. It will bear good fruit in your children, and it'll be an act of charity at times for the people, other people who are attending their their masses. And so, um, so it is um, it is a, it is a good and godly thing all around to to try to do these things as, to the best of your ability. Perfect. Father, thank you very much. As always, please, everyone who watched this, if you, if you enjoyed it, even if you didn't, please like, share, subscribe, <laughs> comment, all that stuff. Give, give Father a hard time in the comment section. He he is a uh, he, he'll take it, uh, it, but be careful though, because he'll he'll dish it back right at you. But uh, no, but yeah. but really, do please share this because this is one that I think is it is very important. I think it is.
something that I think it, it really could help people. I think, you know, it'll help people clarify some things, you know, when should they take, take children out? How should they handle it if they don't have children? I think that's, that is exactly why father's here and exactly why we did the show to be helpful. Um, so we hope you enjoy it. Please, you know, again, do all that stuff. Father, we'll see you around hopefully sometime in the coming weeks. I know we got a philosophy show that what we're going to do here. Holy Week's coming up, which I think is the busiest time of the year for a priest. Holy Week, uh, Christmas, I think. So it's not going to be in time super soon, but we're working on it. So we're going to have Father on here again, hopefully in, in the coming weeks. But please, actually, now that it comes to mind, please pray for the priests um, for this coming week. I know, I, I'm sure Father as well, there's so much traveling going on and very little sleep. I know that for sure. So of all the times of the year uh, that they need our prayers, I think this is probably number one from, from my experience. So pray for our priest, pray for Father McKenna. You can pray for me as well if you have an, an extra minute. And Father, God bless you. We'll see you next time. God bless you too.